Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the 10 British TV shows that failed and lost a ridiculous amount of money. And his spell is about to be cast. <laughs> Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Number 10, Rise and Fall, 2023. Welcome to Rise and Fall, the game where rulers like me have all the power. We've all seen how popular The Traitors has been for the BBC recently, and rival network Channel 4 wanted a slice of that pie too. As such, they pumped a heck of a lot of money into their reality game show, Rise and Fall. Eddie, please make your way to the penthouse. The whole premise was a massive rip-off of the traitors to begin with, trading faithfuls and traitors with rulers and grafters. But even with this similarity, viewers did not turn up. The £100,000 cash prize may seem steep already, but apparently the actual production of the show was insanely expensive. This, plus the many mistakes they came across while filming, meant the show was cancelled after just one series. Let the power struggle begin. Number 9. Horn and Corden, 2009. Are you out of shape? Are you the wrong shape? With the immense popularity of Gavin and Stacey, it seemed that James Corden and Matthew Horne simply couldn't lose. As such, they were given a blank checkbook and creative freedom when their sketch comedy show, Horn and Corden, was greenlit for BBC Three. The first episode even had a decent draw, but there's the problem. When people saw how bad that episode was, they never came back. I mean, if I told you some of the stuff that he was having to do just to get money, I think you'd be pretty devastated. Horn and Corden was a massive humbling moment for the pair, as it proved that not everything they touched could turn into gold. Then again, Corden knows a thing or two about losing money. After all, his late night show was bleeding up to $20 million in losses annually before its conclusion. Horn. Solid as a rock. He's waiting. But Corden, it seems to have gone to pieces. Number 8. Celebrity Wrestling, 2005. Around the mid 2000s, pro wrestling was already feeling the decline since the widely successful Attitude Era in WWE. I knock her out with my knuckers. Regardless, ITV thought now was a great time to introduce a new show focusing on celebrities trained by pros competing in wrestling adjacent competitions. Fight one! And ITV bet it all on its success, placing it in a prime time slot and even having an after show hosted by Holly Willoughby to discuss the latest episode. Well, you may be surprised to hear this, but it wasn't good. Wrestling fans saw it as an insult to the craft and there was no casual fan base outside of that. It was practically dead on arrival, moved into a quieter slot on a different day and then it lay down for the cancellation three count. Number 7. If Katie Hopkins Ruled the World, 2015 you Not know, everything is about you. Everything is about no, me. It's, it's just my world, it's, it's, I rule it's, it's this not. world. It's quite unlikely that this show itself cost anywhere in the multi-million pounds wheelhouse, but it was a big part of a disastrous push for the British version of TLC's original programming. Katie Hopkins has gained an audience for herself with her controversial opinions, but perhaps they weren't too loyal as her big television debut pulled a frankly abysmal TV draw of only 69,000 people. What? <laughs> So he, yes, he has to. While other shows in TLC's original content listings were renewed, this one was emphatically put down after just seven episodes. TLC would only last a couple more years, and this was clearly the first domino in that collapse. Um, do you know what, Katie? I. Uh... Number six, Space Cadets, 2005. Ever wonder why we get so much reality TV? Well, a big part of that is because it's so cheap to produce. Space Cadets was not cheap. Reportedly costing four to five million pounds to produce, Space Cadets saw a group of contestants tricked into thinking they were going to space when in fact it was all filmed in Suffolk. Despite all the promotion and hype around the television event, it only saw around two million people tuning in, a very modest draw for something of this kind. Despite Channel 4 claiming to not being disappointed with the ratings numbers, there is no way they account for the production cost or prizes handed out, hence why they never attempted anything like it again. Number 5. Jericho 2016. 
You're in charge now. Well, thank you, sir. The peak of Downton Abbey's popularity was both a blessing and a curse for British television. TV execs across the country were desperate to find similar success, despite period dramas being incredibly expensive to produce. That's when they landed on this idea. Ever wondered what a British Western would look like? Well, wonder no more, because here's Jericho. You said we could come to you. I'm sorry, Annie. Set in the 1870s in a fictional town in the Yorkshire Dales, this show focuses on the construction of a viaduct. And yeah, it's as high budget as it sounds. That, however, didn't convert to viewers, as despite having a healthy number, it simply didn't match what was needed to make the show a commercial success. The show was axed before Series 2 could be commissioned, which meant that the expensive set was never used again. How about a kiss instead, then? How about I smack you with this suitcase? Number 4. Beowulf. Return to the Shieldlands, 2016. That's it. No thanks. When a show is originally planned to have five series and gets cancelled midway through its first one, you know something has gone horribly wrong. Based on the poem of Beowulf, this show tried to breathe new life into the tale and honestly failed. Despite the budget, Beowulf still managed to look egregiously cheap, according to critics. Couple that with a sizeable cast with a few notable names and it was clear that this was losing big money. ITV took the L and dared not speak of it ever again. There's no time to bury him. Not if we're to make Eric by nightfall. Number 3. Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, 2015. You've a message to deliver. To him. This one may surprise you, since it was so well received, but yes, this series revolving around magicians and dark powers actually had a rough time. Following an impressive opening episode viewership of roughly 4.5 million viewers, the second, third and so on had a massive drop until it was floating around the 1 million mark. That is quite common, usually, but given the insane budget the BBC gave this show, with all its costumes and set pieces, it would have taken some real magic to recoup their losses. <coughs> Number 2. Camelot, 2011 So you're the boy. I'm Arthur, who are you? His name is Merlin and he's not welcome here! What's a Canadian show doing here, you ask? Well, it's actually made by two of Britain's most revered television figures in Chris Chibnall and Michael Hurst. They wanted to capitalise on the success of series like Game of Thrones and Merlin, airing around the same time, adding a sexy filter over an already established tale. But the audience simply wasn't interested. <laughs> Perhaps they'd seen it all before, or perhaps it didn't scratch the same itch as its grittier counterparts. But either way, with a rumoured episode budget in the multi-millions and viewership only in the hundred thousands, it's clear this one was a swing and miss. Stop worrying about the dead. The living need us more. Number 1. El Dorado, 1992 My fate is very important to me. To many, the title El Dorado is synonymous with the word flop. El Dorado was a hugely ambitious project where the BBC attempted to kickstart a new soap opera in the same vein as EastEnders and Corrie, but set in Spain instead. First, they needed to build an entire town as the set, which set them back roughly £10 million. And that's just scratching the surface when you count other production costs. What happened? I'll give you three guesses. Despite its primetime slot, the show absolutely failed to draw in viewers, and reviews were also dire. The show was cancelled after its first year, but like most things with the BBC, it's not their money that's funding it, so they just shrugged it off. You haven't seen me, right? Did you watch any of these programmes? What did you think? Let us know in those comments below. Let's not forget these guys. Everyone join in if you want to. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.